you probably want to fetch some data into your application, even if you are on the client side or on the server side. In this video, I'm going to show you how to fetch data in many ways. Right now I got a slash post slash ID root and I'm catching here the parameter which is one and I got on my API side actually a list of posts that would be written actually directly from a list that we got in here. So let's start with the server side. What I'm going to do here is to create a function that I'm going to call directly uh, actually inside my post here, my function post ID in here. So we're going to see the difference. Here I can declare, for instance, a function called get post by ID, let's say, okay, and it's going to be an asynchronous function. And this function here is going to call my own API. So here what I'm going to do, I'm going to type const response and here it's an asynchronous function so I got to put an await and I can use fetch. So at this uh, step of the course I'm going to explain to you that here fetch is available on the server side. Okay so in fetch I can pass a lot of parameters the first parameter, of course, it's going to be the URL. And then after I can pass the header, the method, etc., etc. Okay, so we got uh, get post by ID. And here I would like to pass my post ID, which would be a string. All right, so here I'm going to call slash API slash post. And in here I got the, the, to put actually this pass as a dynamic root. And inside here, so here I made a mistake, I'm going to add the parentheses again, there we go. In here, I'm going to pass the post ID that we got in here. So the method of this call, it's going to be a get. So if I come back here, I got a get. So I'm going to put method and here I got get. And there we go. So now that I got my response, what I can do is to return actually this response as a JSON. All right, so you're going to tell me, uh, thank you very much, uh, Guillaume, for this quick explanation about this function, but what should I do with it, okay? Yeah, of course, you got to call this function, otherwise you will never be able to retrieve the post. So here I'm going to type post, and in here I got access, of course, to the function because I'm in the same scope, I'm on the same file. So remember, I got my params, params.id, which is coming from here, and what I need to do in here is to await for what? For get post by id. And in here, I got to pass the parameter of the current ID, which is params.id in my root. All right, but look at this. Here I got an await, and my function here is not an asynchronous function. So what I need to do is to put this function asynchronous. We see that we got an error. And if I come back in here into my code that I've just written, here I got a pass, but this pass it's not a complete pass, okay? Here, I, I assume that locally I can fetch my API, but it's not the case. At this step, the API is not available here. What I need to put here is the HTTP and here my localhost 3000 to get access to my API, all right? So it's a common mistake. You think that you can call your API this way when you are on the server side, but it's not possible. So I'm gonna come back. And here we see that I don't get any error. So as a front-end developer, what you would do is to open your console and look at uh, uh, the console log we have in here. But actually it's rendered on the server side. So basically what's happening in here is that I have to open my console inside VS Code. And what we have here is an empty object, of course, because if I look to my list, on the API in here, I don't get any post with number one. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just going to put post number 12. And here we see that I got my answer. I got my post down there that I can return. So basically here, if I come back to my front, here, what I'm supposed to have is a deconstruct object with post and I got my post in here. So what I can do 
is coming back in here. I got a title, I got a description. So let's say that I'm going to build a little bit this uh, uh, post. So post.title and down there I'm going to put a post.description in here. Okay, so when I come back, I got my hello and my amazing post. So this was on the server side. When I use the server side function up there, outside of my function that I export into my uh, file, my TSX file, I can call my function getPost by ID directly here with the params catched. Okay, so now let's try to use it as a client, okay, as a client component. We suddenly see that async await is not supported by a client component, only server component can use async await. So here we see that there is a main difference between client component and server component. So if we come back here on the top, I got my use client with my get post ID and I'm calling this async await here a function that I got. So if I want to do it on the client side, what I need to do is to remove this async, but suddenly I don't get any await. So what should I do? What should I do is to drag and drop this function get post ID, get post by ID directly in here. So here I can't await actually this function to be processed at this step. And even if I try to move this function inside my client component in here and I try to come back and I try to upload, I still got an error. So how can I do this? Oh, can I recreate this function get post by ID that I can call directly into my, uh, uh, into my post ID in here? Well, what I would do is basically, and here I think I can just command this, what I would do here, for instance, is to create a post and a set post, and I would use my state, okay? And in my state, by default, okay, I would put a null. So here, what I would have probably, if I would like, it's to create a type post. Actually, type post is equal, there we go. And here with a title that would be a string, and let's say that this title would not be um, mandatory and here a description. So what I would do down there is to put my state post or null and there we go. So here as a condition, I would put post and post title and exactly the same in here. Here I, I made it uh, by purpose to put two posts like this. I could do it better, but it's just to show you how we could do. Okay, so we got our post, which is empty. So I don't render anything in here. So how would I write this function on the client side? I would write it slightly differently from the server side. What I would do at first is to rewrite it directly in here. So I would create a asynchronous function that I would call like this. And in here, and I'm going to zoom a little bit for that, I'm going to write a try catch, okay? So if I would have an error, I would console log my error. What we want to do here is to use the params ID and to set our post if we've got a response. So I can bring back this piece of code up here. And let's say that if I got a response, I want to just to start for this course, console log my response. All right, that's great. But at this step, I never call my get post by ID. So what a lot of people would do directly is to use effect here. And this may be here the best solution to call my function. So I'm going to just use get post by ID. And as an empty array here, I would say that actually when I put this empty array, it means that I want to trigger this function when the component is rendered when it's ready. Okay, but I forgot something in here. I still got my post by ID, but post by ID doesn't exist. So what I need to do is to use the params ID. Okay, so we got our function. It's supposed to be triggered in here. And if there is a response, we want to console log the response. So I'm going to come back in here. I'm just going to remove this. All right, so I got this response in here, but I can't do anything with that. I'm going to come back in here and I want to turn it I want to turn it actually into a JSON. So I'm going to type here 
await and here I want to console log my data. So I'm going to type data and there we go. And when I come back, I got my post that is available in here. And what I can do is actually to deconstruct here with the, with the post, so I can remove that. And suddenly what I can do is to set my post. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to say if post, and here I'm going to say set post of post. And suddenly I got my hello, amazing post, and this is it. So when I got the response, I turn the response into a JSON, and if there is a post, I set my post. So we've got our function here on the client side, the, which is actually slightly longer uh, than on the server side, but it's done on the client side, on a client component. A lot of you would ask, what should we do while we wait on the client side to get the answer from the API? Because here we see that we've got a bit of timing in here. If you are on the server side, you can create in here a loading.tsx, a loading page, okay? And here you can put your loading elements such as skeleton or whatever. And on the client side, what I suggest you to do, and that's what I do most of the time, is to put a loading state, okay? So let's say that our loading state would be on false. And down there, instead of having this, I would have a div with my loading element, then I would have another div with a post. And here I would display this only, so only if I'm on loading, okay? And down there, I would display this only if I'm not on loading. And in here, I would check for my loading element. The only thing that I need to do is to come back here and to put my set loading on true here, for instance. And after my, my catch down there, I would put a finally to say that every time you finish to do your operation, you set loading on false. I just put a debugger after my call to show you the loading state because here it's really fast because I'm calling my API locally. What I can do is to try to reload and here we see that I got my loading element just in here. You could do, for instance, a skeleton, a gray skeleton, uh, showing the UI, waiting for the actually the data to be completed. Let's come back on the server side and let's talk about revalidating the data. Why? Because with Next.js, you can revalidate, which means refetch again the data at a certain interval. Why would we do this? Remember here on the server side, we generate directly the page that we want when we go to slash post slash ID. But the problem is that probably the data would change while we are on the page and we would like to revalidate. So what we can pass here as a parameter, we can pass a parameter next which gives in us information actually to the next uh, state of this request. We want to do something with it. And here we can use what we call revalidate. There are two ways to revalidate. Um, you can say that it's going to be manual or automatic. So automatic, it's with the milliseconds. Let's say that every uh, five milliseconds, I want to revalidate the data. So it's going to update again uh, the page data based on this one, okay? Or otherwise you can use it manually. Then we saw different way to fetch data inside a Next.js application. Either it's going to be on a client component, so it's going to be inside our function and we would have to work on setting a use state or a loading state inside of it if we want to make a clean front-end application. Otherwise, if, if it's on the server component, you can do it outside your post ID, create your function, and you can fetch the data directly after that inside the function rendering the page or the component. If you want to revalidate the data, because here the data here fetched is going to be fetched one time, you can revalidate and clear the cache of Next.js by using the next revalidate. It would revalidate your data inside your page rendered. 